Okay, so we're on the second slide now, and just a reminder before we begin, let's review what it means for something to be a conditional statement, and that is to be in the form of if P, then Q. And again, P stands for the hypothesis, and Q stands for the conclusion. And if we interchange the P and the Q, then we formulate what's called the converse, if Q, then P. Okay, so let's continue with our next definition, which is for midpoint. If a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, then it is a midpoint. I'd like you to notice the use of the uh, abbreviations that I used, and those are permissible for you too when you write these definitions. If a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, then it's a midpoint. So take the, take the liberty to make those uh, abbreviations as well, just to save you a little bit of time. Like the other slide, I'm going to identify the hypothesis, the P, using green. And those are all the phrases, all the words after the word if. And I'm going to highlight the conclusion in orange, which are the words after the word then. Now I'm going to formulate the converse, which would reverse the hypothesis and the conclusion. If a point is a midpoint, then it divides the segment into two congruent segments. Okay, and now I'll give you an illustration of exactly what a midpoint is. Okay, so suppose you were walking through the geometry forest and you stumbled upon this segment AB. And there is this point in the middle of AB called M, and it splits that segment into two equal segments, or two congruent segments, AM, and MB are congruent according to the tick marks. Well, if that scenario happens, then M is called the midpoint. So the conclusion we could make is that M is the midpoint of segment AB. Okay, moving on to the next definition, which is for angle bisector. That definition is, if a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then it is an angle bisector. I'll identify the hypothesis in green and the conclusion in orange. I'll interchange the green and the orange to formulate the converse. If a ray is an angle bisector, then it divides an angle into two congruent angles. Now I'll give an illustration of an angle bisector. You'll notice in this diagram we have a large angle, angle DEF. And there is a ray that runs right in the middle of it. And we know it's right in the middle of that large angle because on either side, the two smaller angles are congruent. And the smaller angles are angle DEG and angle GEF. So because that large angle has been split exactly in half by that ray, that ray is the angle bisector. So the conclusion I can make is that ray EG bisects angle DEF. Okay, our next definition is for angle trisector. It's very similar to angle bisector, but if we really focus on the prefix, bisector means two. Well, the prefix bi means two, and the large angle was split into two equal angles. So as you may have guessed, the prefix tri means three, so that's like taking an angle and splitting it into three equal angles. So the two definitions are gonna be pretty similar. An angle trisector, if two rays divide an angle into three congruent angles, then they are angle trisectors. So I want to just highlight a couple differences between angle bisector and angle trisector. An angle bisector is one ray. An angle trisector is two rays. An angle bisector takes an angle and cuts it in half, whereas an angle trisector cuts it into three congruent angles. So those are just some things to watch out for. So again, I'll identify the hypothesis in green, the P part, and the conclusion, the Q in orange. And now I'll interchange the green and the orange to formulate the converse. If two rays are angle trisectors, then they divide the angle into three congruent angles. Okay, and now I'll give you an illustration of angle trisectors. Okay, what we have here is a very large angle, angle DEF. And there are two rays 
inside of that angle, ray EM and ray EN, and what they do is they take that large angle DEF and it splits it into, or they split it into thirds, three congruent angles. And we know those inner angles are congruent as indicated by the tick marks. So my conclusion here would be that ray EM and ray EN are angle trisectors. Sorry, I went off the page a little bit there, but I just couldn't fit that in. Okay, our last conditional is going to be the very first theorem that we learn. And I'm, it might be worth defining what a theorem is before I even start. Maybe you've heard of what a theorem is, or you've heard the word theorem, but you're not sure what it is. A theorem is a mathematical statement that we can prove to be true if we want to. So let me write that at the top left where there's a little bit of room, the definition of what a theorem is. And I'd like you to write this as well. Okay, let me read that to you. Theorem, a mathematical statement that can be proved true. And as the course goes on, we're going to be learning a lot of theorems. And those theorems are going to lay the foundation for all of our geometry knowledge as the course goes on. So our very first theorem is going to be if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. I'll identify the hypothesis, and I'll identify the conclusion. I was supposed to do that in orange. Okay, something really interesting happens at this moment, so definitely pay attention. For the first seven definitions that I gave you, when we formulated the converse, it was as true as the conditional was, and that's true of any definition. If you write a definition in if p then q form or in if q then p form, they will be true. But not all theorems are reversible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to formulate the converse. And the converse will read, if two angles are congruent, then they are right angles. Okay, so a couple things. Notice my abbreviation for right angles. I got lazy and I didn't, write, I didn't want to write the whole word out, so I just wrote it like this. And you can do that too in my class. But I really want you to think about the words here. Don't just read them. I want you to really think about them. Let's go back over here to the conditional. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. If you think about that, if you have a right angle off to your left and it's 90 degrees, and you've got a right angle off to the right and it's 90 degrees, would you say that they're congruent? I think you'd say that they are, so I'm just gonna write true here. Now if we go to the converse, if two angles are congruent, then they are right angles. Again, really think about that. Imagine some angle to the left. I'm imagining one and it's 50 degrees. Now I'm imagining one to the right and it's also 50. So yes, they're both congruent, but are they both right angles? The answer is no. Okay, let me give you an illustration of how this theorem might work. So what I'm noticing is I've got a right angle called A, and I have a right angle called B. And according to the theorem right here, if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. So my conclusion will be that angle A is congruent to angle B. So here are the eight essential definitions, and or I guess there are seven essential definitions from chapter 1.5 and the first theorem of many in this course. So hopefully you've written them all down in their conditional form, you've written them all down in their converse form, and you've provided an illustration for each. In tomorrow's class, we'll extend upon this knowledge and hopefully clarify some things that may still be confusing.